In this lesson, moving forward, I want to talk about the bitwise operators and the shift operators in Java. So we've been working with the arithmetic operators, basic ones, the logical ones, and so on. Here, moving forward, let's take a look at what a bitwise operator is and how shift operators work. So Java's bitwise operators operate on individual bits of integers, whether it's the int or long values. So for instance, if an operand is shorter than an int, it is promoted to int before doing the operations. And what this does, it helps to know how integers are basically represented in binary. So for example, if the decimal number 3 is represented as 1 1 in binary, and the decimal number 5 is represented as 101 in binary. Negative numbers are stored in 2's complement form and so on. So the bitwise operators have various types. So we can have A and B, A exponent B, tilde A, and so on. And I'm going to demonstrate this next, what they look like. But just so you have an idea what a bitwise operator is. So as far as the shift operator is concerned, Java defines shift to mask or basically wrap around. Okay, so that's what shift does. And of course, we can use these shift operators as, for instance, left shift or the right shift. Or you can use it as unsigned right shift. So there are various options that I'll demonstrate. So let's jump right in. Let me go ahead and open up the Java Eclipse editor so that I can create several programs for better understanding the bitwise and the shift operator. So once we're in the Java Eclipse editor, I'm going to go ahead and simply right click and create a new class. Choose new and then click on class. And first I'm going to demonstrate the masking, right? Or just I'm going to name it bit demo and then click finish. And this creates a public class called bit demo. Now, the Java programming language, by the way, provides all of these operators, right? And we can either perform bitwise and bit shift operations on integral types. So before I even begin the actual program, let me bring up my notepad here. I've listed all of these bitwise and bit shift operators, okay? So for example, the tilde sign here that you see is the unary bitwise complement. Then we have the sign left shift, the signed right shift, the unsigned right shift, and of course our and sign. We've been using some of these in the past as well. This is the bitwise and. And of course the exponent sign is the bitwise exclusive or. And of course just a straight line would be the bitwise inclusive or. So these are the bitwise and bit shift operators. But in this program, simply I'm just going to show you how to go ahead and mask our bits. So it's easier for us to understand once we get to using all of these operators. So let's go ahead. Let me first get out of the public here. And I'm just going to call this class bit demo. And here I'm going to use the public static void main. And of course, our string with command line arguments, if any. Open the curly braces. Simply do a int bit mask as the variable. And I'm going to call this or equals, let's say, 0 times. And then just some hexadecimal here. And then I'm going to place the semicolon then do the int value or just val as the variable. And this is going to equal 0 times 2222. Two, two, two. Another one, semicolon. And let's do a system dot out. So you can see the output, right? Dot print in. And I'm going to print in the val. OK. And use the ampersign bitmask semicolon 
So just, just a small program just so that you can actually see the output. Now if you think about it, here the output is going to be when it does the printout, right? So it's going to use this operator, the bitwise AND. Okay, so we're using the bitwise AND in this example. And we're just using the two variables, the val and the bit mask. And each of these hexadecimal values obviously in decimals represents a number. So if I run this, the output is going to be 2. But let me go ahead and in fact click on the run button. Save and launch dialog box appears. Click OK. And perfect. So we get our output as 2. So just to demonstrate a simple masking and then conversion into the binary or decimal format. Now let's move on. Next, let me go ahead and demonstrate and give you another example by using all of these operators in one program. So it's easier for us to actually see. So let's go ahead and right click one more time. Click on new, create a new class. And I'm going to call this test bitwise. Okay, you can just give it any name. Click finish. And here's our public class. And next I'm going to go ahead and simply do public static void main and of course our string with the command line arguments if any. Open the curly braces. Perfect. Let's identify and provide some variables. So int a equals let's say any number 60 and then I'm going to have int b equals 13 semicolon and let's do another one so c equals just keeping things simple here 0 for example great so once I have these simple variables let's go ahead and start using some of these operators so let's do C equals A and B semicolon. And let's do a printout. So system dot out dot print in. And simply going to print the A and B. And this is going to equal with space quotations and concatenate this with let's say C. So this is just one example of using the ampersand, right? Next, let's go ahead and let's do another one. So C equals A and then I'm going to use let's say B semicolon and then let's do a system dot out I'm just going to copy this from the top and then paste it here and change the value or the operator to the line. Perfect. So what do we have so far? Let's bring up our operators. So we have the bitwise inclusive or that's right here. And then I use the and right bitwise and which is above. So let's continue on. Let's go ahead and do a few more so you can actually see the output. So C equals A and then I'm going to use the exponent sign. And this is going to be A exponent and then I'm going to use B semicolon. Let's do a system and just paste it. I already copied it and change the operator to an exponent sign. Perfect. Let's do another one. So here I'm going to use the tilde sign. So C equals A and then tilde sign B semicolon. Same thing with the system dot out dot print in. Changing the operator. Perfect. So this is going to be just the tilde A for example not B because I'm not really interested in B here. So I'm going to get rid of this and simply do 
tilde A. All right, let's scroll down. Let's do the shift operators also. Might as well. So I'm going to do C equals A and then two less than signs, right? Two, let's say two. And then, of course, I need the printout. I'm keeping things constant, right? So that you can actually see the output. So use the operator here again. So this is the shift operator, left sign, and then let's do the right also. So C equals A, and then use the right sign, two, semicolon, do the same printout, just change the operator. Perfect. So once I'm done with this, notice I've demonstrated right the left sign, the right sign, the tilde, exponent, and so on. Let's go ahead and execute this. So let's click on the Run button. Save and Launch dialog box appears. Click OK. And perfect, we have a nice result. So let's bring up the operators here. So we have the A and B, which is equals to 12. A bitwise inclusive OR, B is 61. Bitwise exclusive OR, the exponent sign is 49. The unary bitwise complement, which represents the tilde sign, is negative 61. And of course, we have the signed left shift, which is 240. And if I scroll down, we have the signed right, which is 15. So this way, you understand the bitwise operators and the shift operators in Java. Let me go ahead and do one more small example so that it's easier for us to actually see how it works and how the shift all the bits in negative one, or if the value is negative, how does that work, okay? So let's go ahead and simply right click and create a new class. And I'm gonna call this, let's say, bits one. Click finish. And here's my class first called bits one. And then I'm going to go ahead and do the public static void main string with our command line argument. Open the curly braces. And let's go ahead and do the printout first. So system.out.print. And what am I doing here? I'm going to demonstrate the three greater than signs, right? And that, in fact, if I were to bring up my notepad, and notice this is the only one that was left for me to demonstrate, so this is the unsigned right shift. And that's what I'm going to show how this works here, okay? Perfect. So let's go back to our code. And I'm just going to go ahead and use the operator. Close the quotation. Let me give it a space here. And next, I'm going to go ahead and put some comments so it's easier for us to see. So shift all the bits in negative one, for example, in binary form. So that's what we're going to do here to the right by two. Okay, so we're going to shift them to the right by two places. Perfect. And this is all going to be happening without sign extension using the three greater than sign or the operator itself. Okay. So let's go ahead. Let's do int and y, for example, is the variable equals, okay, let's undo y equals, I'm going to say negative 1, because that's what I want to demonstrate, and simply shift this to the right by 2. And let's do the system.out.println, since I already had that copied from the previous one. Saving time, I'm going to get rid of this, and change this to say negative 1, 3 greater than signs, Use the shift operator, right, to the right by 2. And this is going to equal and concatenate this with the variable y. Straightforward. 
And then next, I'm going to go ahead and simply use negative 1 and then 2 in binary, right? So I'm just going to go ahead and convert into binary form as well. So let's do the system.out.println. And here, I'm going to use negative 1 and then 2 in binary form is quotations, get rid of this, simply going to concatenate this with plus integer dot to binary method and then the value is y. So here let me go ahead and fix the syntax up here with the int variable need a semicolon. Perfect. So a simple example of using the right shift. So let's go ahead and run this. Let's click on the run button. Save and launch dialog box appears. Click OK. And wonderful. We have, or in fact, let me bring up my notepad here, the unsigned rather right shift operator. That's what we're using. And it's going to take the negative one and it's going to shift all the bits in negative one to the right by two. And this is exactly what it did. And then we converted this number into binary form as well. So in this lesson, I demonstrated all of the operators, the bitwise and the shift operators in Java. So practice with these. These are helpful as you write more Java programs. So with this, let's move to the next lesson.